it's your girl, Lexi Wilson. And oh, I'm so excited because this is the first official class in Girl Boss University. There's going to be so many to come and I cannot wait to just flood you guys with information because I love to share. I'm always learning and I'm always trying to teach other people the things that I've seen that have worked for me and things that may not have worked for me but have worked for other people because here's the thing that I've learned when it comes to life and business is that sometimes that thing that the expert says is going to be perfect and it's going to get you the money that you need is not going to work. And so it's going to take you actually experimenting and trying to see what works for you. And I think a lot of the reason behind that is because business and relationships are all about energy. And if you are not matching the energy of the business that you've created or the partnership that you've made or whatever it is, it's going to be a lot harder for you to develop the success that you want in your business, just like it's going to be the very same thing when it comes to uh, making some success. you got to feel in alignment with it. Um, so even though that is the truth, that is the reality, I want to share some of these tips with you, especially when it comes to the beginning of your business. One of the things that people really neglect because it does take time is getting clear on two things. One, what is your, uh, what is the problem that you are solving with your business? And two, who is your business for? Listen, if you don't know what actual problem you're solving, it's gonna be so much harder for you to close the sale. It's gonna be so much harder for you to even find where it is that your people are and what is like, what do they need from you? Because businesses are basically built on the idea that there is a problem. Someone wants to pay to get the solution, right? Someone wants to build a house. They don't know how to, so they have a problem. That's where the construction guys come in because they're like, hey, we'll solve that problem for you if you exchange money to get this done so we can solve that problem and you'll have a house, okay? So you have to get clear on what is the problem that your business is actually solving. When I first started as a coach, I was looking for, um, uh, or well, now I wasn't looking for this for myself as much as I wanted to be the type of person that was there for someone who I needed back in the day. I struggled with anxiety my whole life and I didn't really have anybody to advocate for, be an advocate for me because no one understood anxiety the way that we understand anxiety today. So I had to figure out how to manage my stress, how to build my coping skills and all of that basically on my own because no one could help me, including my parents. So once I graduated from school, I got my therapy degree and all of that stuff, I started working on the side as a coach to bring in some income, but also because although I was working in therapy, I didn't get to really choose the topics that I wanted to talk about. So if somebody came into to my room and were talking to me about marital problems, that's what we're talking about. Or if they're talking about bills, that's what we're talking about. But my passion was focusing on anxiety. So I started working on the side, this was in like 2013, as a life coach to people who were struggling with anxiety, trying to identify it and how to cope with it. That's how I realized that the what I was trying to solve was the problem of people who were struggling with um, uh, anxiety and they had no resources. I was gonna become a resource and support to help them manage it and help them develop a coping plan so that they could deal with anxiety much better than they might have been dealing with it in the past. So that was the problem. I recognized I had the solution and I was willing to ask for money in exchange to give them the valuable information I had learned from school and also just learn from being a woman who has anxiety, okay? You have to get clear in your business model, what is the problem you're solving? If, you, if I ask you that question and you're thinking to yourself, I don't really know, start there, <laughs> okay? You gotta start there. That's the first thing that as your homework, as soon as you finish watching this, I want you to start looking at what is the problem that I'm solving and who is the person that's looking to get that problem solved. So now we're gonna move on to the second part of who is that person, okay? And this again is a part that a lot of people don't look at, okay? They don't really uh, wanna spend a lot of time here and yet it's vital to the success of your business and let me tell you why. 
when you know who you're trying to help, you know how to speak to them and how to find them. Okay. But if you don't know who you're trying to help, if your answer is, I just want to help everybody, you're not going to help anybody. I mean, it's just, it's just real talk. You have to specify. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to limit yourself to just a niche and nor does it mean that if somebody who doesn't match the, the standards that you set for who you want to work with, that you don't have to, that you can't work with them. You can, of course, but it's, it's important that you actually start to create the identity of the man or the woman that you're trying to reach out to. So here are some of the things that you want to start to look at. Okay. Is number one, I wrote some of it down on my iPad because got to take notes, right? Okay. Number one is what are the hobbies of the person that you want to have as your ideal client? What do they like to do? Where do they shop? Uh, you know, what are the activities? Do they like to read? Do they like to go out? Are they introverted? Are they extroverted? Do they enjoy drinking? Uh, are they, do they have a problem with drinking? Uh, or what are their like hobbies? What are the things that they enjoy that makes them feel inspired? Second thing is what's their style? Like, this is really important if you're like a beauty influencer or anything like that. So for example, I work in luxury hair care, right? So I'm going to need somebody who actually cares about their hair <laughs> and cares about the health of their hair. And by knowing that, it'll help me to find where that girl is. But if her style is more like, I just like to wear a sock bun and I don't really like to do my hair or I like to keep it short and not really do anything with it, then more than likely that's not going to be my ideal client. It doesn't mean that I won't ever work with somebody who fits that mold, but it's probably not my ideal because they don't have the one thing that I'm trying to help, which is hair, <laughs> right? Or they don't care about the one thing that I'm trying to help with, which is hair. So you got to get clear on what's their style. What do they dress like? Uh, where do they shop and all of that? Another thing to start thinking about is IG accounts that they would follow. Okay, the more that you know your person, your ideal client, okay, you can start to think about, well, what, a, when you know who she is and you know her hobbies and you know her style, you know what she likes to do or he likes to do, then it makes it a lot clearer for you to find where they're at online. So here's an example, right? This is Girl Boss University, which means that I'm looking for women who want to learn how to leverage their network to make money online and in real life. I would do really well to go to Instagram accounts that focus on girl bosses. Maybe they're sharing quotes or tips or whatever on how to be a powerful woman and make money using your mind, your creativity, whatever the case is, right? That would work for me, right? Because that's gonna obviously be my ideal client. It wouldn't be wise for me to go to someone who maybe is, um, not really interested in making money online or in real life. Maybe they just want to kind of raise children and that's their passion, which I love. I was raised by a stay at home mom, but here's the reality. Then that, that person isn't really going to love what I'm trying to offer. I'm not solving a problem for them because they don't have a problem when it comes to getting their career off the ground or learning how to make money because that's not what they're trying to do. Their problem may be, how do I discipline my children? How do I stay motivated on days when I don't feel inspired? How do I love my kids when I freaking hate them, right? <laughs> Those are their problems. So it would be wise to go to the places and go to the accounts of the um, places that your ideal client would be at. The second thing is Facebook groups, okay? Same thing. Where are the Facebook groups that your person is at? My girl, she's gonna be in girl boss groups. She's gonna be in female empowerment groups. She's gonna be in beauty groups, okay? That's what she's going to be, um, hang that's where she's gonna be hanging out and because those are her passions. So you gotta start thinking to yourself, where is your girl or your guy hanging out online? And the last um, thing that you want to look at is how much money does your person make? Now, this is important because if you have a brand that maybe is luxury, like mine is luxury, um, or if you have something that maybe isn't, um, it's a nice thing, but it's not a necessary thing, then you probably want someone with a little bit of a disposable income. They have the ability to buy what it is that you're selling, right? If you're a coach, this is really important. You want to make sure that the person that you're taught, that your ideal client is someone who can afford you. So if you're trying to do a package that 
$2,000 for six weeks of coaching and you're talking to people who make only $1,500 a month, girl, you're not going to make no money because you're not finding your ideal client, the girl who's making more than that so she can afford you. It's also important when it comes to the mindset because that's another thing as well that coaches really need to get clear on is a lot of times when you're talking to clients, their mindset might not be in the space where they feel that they have the money even though they do. Because I know I've done that many times where I, you guys, I like wrote on my hand. You guys, I'm so all over the place. Anyways, but I've done that where I've said, oh, I don't really have the money for that. And then realistically, it's like, I did have the money. I just didn't see the value in purchasing that because I wanted to watch Netflix instead of hiring a coach, which I've done that before. And I realized I made mistakes. So I ended up hiring the coach. But that's the thing as well, is that sometimes their mindset is a little off. So you want to make sure that your ideal client has the type of mindset that's willing to see the value that you bring into their lives. Now, of course, it's up to you to share the value so that we may understand that why you're so necessary to their life. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about how you can start to share value so that way people will purchase from you because I can assure you that the majority of the sales that you're not making are not just because uh, you're not good at sales or you're not like, oh, that may or may not be true. It probably has more so to do with the fact that you're not conveying the value that you bring so that way they know like, you can't not have me. I'm the greatest thing ever. I'm going to change your life. I'm going to change your business. It's hard to convey that value because a lot of us get, especially as women, we get stuck on not wanting to seem full of ourselves. But you know, ladies, we got to own it because we bring powerful transformation to people's lives as coaches, as leaders, as supporters. And we're not going to do that if we're too busy being afraid to actually showcase the value that we bring, whether it's through testimonials or whether it's just through telling you how great we are, right? So this is going to be really important for you guys to really start to get clear on whether or not you know what is the problem that you're trying to solve. What is the problem that your business is solving? And two, who is the lady, the lucky lady, <laughs> or that lucky gentleman, or that lucky family, whoever your ideal client is, who is that person? Where are they at? And it's okay if you have several different avatars. That's what we usually call them, ideal clients or avatars. It's okay if you have, like, I have a couple. You know, um, so it's all right to make those clear. Like these are the women that I would want to work with, the families that I would want to work with, the kids I want to work with. For example, um, I have a girl, like this is who I want to work with, but I also have children that I want to work with because in my products, we have a children's line. And for me, when my first, my issues started uh, with my hair and my self-esteem was when I was a child. It was when I was 11 years old. If I had the children's line that I had now, like if my mom had gotten that, I don't know what level of confidence I would have had if I could have dealt with my hair and my psoriasis and dermatitis with products that worked, right? But that didn't exist back in the day. So now one of my ideal clients is that little 10 year old girl who realizes I have freaking psoriasis and I don't have a solution. I want to find her. I want to find her mama, her mama who's on her wits end trying to figure out how do I deal with my kid's skin condition? Her hair is flaky. Her scalp is itchy, blah, 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 blah. Then I got to find where is that mama? Is she in the mom groups talking about how she's struggling with her child's hair? Uh, is she at, you know, a, a, at the store? What store is she at? Like, I got to know who that is because one of my ideal clients is that little girl who reminds me of me. So it's okay to have several different ideal clients and several different avatars, but it's important that you have at least one so you can start to, to build your marketing strategy. We'll go more in depth about how to build a, a successful marketing strategy or several different marketing strategies because I think it's important to have more than one, uh, but we'll do that in another class. I hope that you enjoyed this. Definitely take some time after this to write down some of the stuff uh, that comes to your mind when it comes to answering these two questions. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. We'll start to talk and engage. Um, and of course, I'll share any more tips with you that I can think of and that I also learn and experiment with as well. Thanks so much for joining GU Girl Boss University. Me and Minnie are <laughs> very happy you're here. Bye.